and welcome to this special edition of Life Changes with Filippo. I am your host, Filippo Voltaggio, and today we have a special interview with famous medium and Emmy-nominated TV host of The Afterlife, Suzanne Northrup. And this is really exciting because normally when we see you, you're with large audiences and you're doing your work, and here we're in a little bit more intimate setting. Mm -hmm. Although, what could be more intimate than what you do? Yeah. You're talking about people's very most intimate experiences with people they truly love. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is intimate in a different way, I suppose. Yeah. And I have to add that I'm glad that we're actually so far, knock on wood, <laughs> able to film this. Yeah. Because it seems like everywhere you go, things just blow up. What is happening? Well... First of all, dead people don't have bodies, just in case you haven't figured that out. And okay. because they don't have body, they work on frequency or a, a different frequency than we work on, you know, because we all know matter is, is dense. So because of that, what happens, it's a very high energy. Uh, not only is that one of the ways that they make contact with us, but it's very common when you're doing any kind of, you know, things with machines that they will, and, and it happens in multi-million dollar studios. So I tell people that's like, if it happens there, you know it can happen anywhere. You know, you, you know radio, when you listen to a radio, it, it's constant. But if somebody goes off the air literally for like a minute, that's a long time of dead air. Yeah. I mean, no, no, no pun intended, right. dead air. And that has happened in, in some, of the, some of the studios that I've been in. So. And it's because of the entities uh, yeah, around Yeah, I have you? to gather it has to do with their energies. I mean, it, I think, honestly, I think it's a combination of their energies, but I also think they want you to know they're there. And what better way than, you know... Than blowing up yeah, the studio. Yeah, right. Like, like the last time we did this, we had an entire show by cell phone. Right. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> we literally did the yeah. whole show using cell our cell phones, yeah. yours and mine. And yeah. Yeah. That, and yeah. you said that that's never happened at the studio. No, absolutely not. And it's... N nor since. Nor since. And, right. and right. It, wasn't, it wasn't comfortable. But yet, if you're telling me this, then it is. it just is what it is. Yes. And you just yeah. go you, with you it. You learn to work with it. You yeah. learn to work with it. Yeah. Like you learn to work with whatever's coming through. Correct. Correct. Uh, yes, I, I know that I'm, I'm, I've learned to work with that, but even within that, believe it or not, I have to be very conscientious of what comes out of my mouth, the way it's said, in terms of the responsibility of what I give that person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you kind of have to, you know, have a cue from people. It's like there's some people that you know, you can be stronger with them mm -hmm. and, you know, be like, now wake up, you know, you know who that is and I want you to listen. And other ones, when they're, you know, they're fragile. And you have to mm -hmm. like really be able to kind of read the person, even though you're giving that information. Uh, so you know, I'll give it as I get it, but I know that there's certain ways that you can say things and not say things. Like for example, uh, sometimes somebody will ask me if I know when someone's going to pass. Now, if I get that, I can't give it out. So mm -hmm. I will have to say something like, you know, when was the last time you saw, you know, your parents? you know, whatever it was. I mean, this literally just happened to me. Um, there, was a, there was a gentleman, and I, I was doing a, a lecture at, and he came up to me afterwards and he said, last time I saw you, he said, my two aunts showed up. One showed up with the apron and one showed up with mm. whatever it is. And he says, and I knew them both and they're, uh, they're both really connected to me. He said, but they kept emphasizing me to go home. Now he said, you know, both my parents are in their 80s. So I really felt like, okay, I was a little concerned, even though you didn't say anything. Mm. And he says, I went home, and that mm. week my brother died. Oh, wow. It wasn't even the answer. Wow. Yeah. Well, it happened actually during our show that you asked somebody about somebody's father and asked him where, whether his father was here in the afterlife because you knew that he was in transition and we mm -hmm. spoke about this afterwards mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because when the person let us know that within the week the father passed we connected with you and you said right I was seeing that and yes. I just wanted him to I wasn't able to tell him right but I wanted him to know yeah yeah. Maybe you should go see yeah, him or right. something or that his dad was okay and you know because there's always the questions are right. they okay right you know that whole process so. Was there ever a time when you were not knowing the best way to to let people know? I mean, I'm thinking of you as a child. Like, was mm -hmm. there ever a time when you when you said, "Oh, this," but people weren't ready to hear? 
Yeah, but I think when you're children, depending on what your circumstances are or, or your surroundings, you know, in terms of, you know, your background, mm. I think it has an awful lot to do with how you deal with it. So, in, in other words, you know, I mean, I've, I know people in my field that had very strict religious backgrounds. Mm. Um, and not all of them, but a lot of them have, have had a lot of difficulty because of that. Because of the stigma, because are you are supposed to do this or you're not supposed to do this, and they hold, you know, they often hold on to it because we know when we're children we're like sponges, mm -hmm. and we know that sometimes that stuff stays with us. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any of that, you know. I was raised in a, in, a, in a rural town, and I didn't have like no strong religious stuff and no like intellectual type parents. My parents were, were you know, literally farmers, or you know, in, so it was very, very different. And interesting enough, because of that, you know, people that that you know that work with the land, mm -hmm. th th you know. They may not, quote unquote, have a sense of God, but they have a sense of God in a greater sense, hmm. which is, you know, in the Bible, there's a time and there's a season for everything. Right. Well, you see spring, what happens after this dead of winter, oh. and then you see the harvest. So you know that there's a cycle, and we have that in our natural lives. So, you know, and, and there was a time that we didn't put people in institutions. They were at home when they were mm. sick. Um, we went through that process with them. We saw them, you know, be ill and physically die and have their presence there. Uh, that's changed, obviously, radically. So as a child, you were able to say anything you wanted and people... Well, yeah, I don't know if I to say anything I wanted, but I, I did. And, you know, and it, I, my mother didn't kind of like look at me strange because of that. Mm. Uh, but there were sometimes there were things that, you know, that were very, there was one situation that was extremely alarming to me. Um, I lived right, you know, where there were railroad tracks. And one day when I was coming home from school, I, I kept seeing this, this, this young guy that, you know, obviously he was, I was raised around him. And I knew that he always used to jump the trains. And I was just, I just kept getting this really weird feeling. I mean, really weird feeling. And I got home that night. What jump the trains means jump on the train? Yes. Oh, and yes. while the train is moving. Yes. Okay. It, it's, you know, it's, it's a thing that they did in those, you know. Okay. I, I assume, I hope they still don't do that. But, you know, you know, kids, what can I tell you? Kids do stuff like that. Okay. And I had this really weird feeling. And, you know, sure enough, I got home. My mother says, oh, do you know what happened to Johnny Kiefer? And I says, no. And he, see, he goes like, he got thrown under the railroad tracks. And, and you saw him, did you? I had a sense of, Oh, you had a sense of I had a sense oh, okay. of sickness in my, in my stomach. Oh, okay. And literally saw the tracks and literally saw him. Oh, wow. And so I must have been seeing it almost sequentially at the same time it happened. Oh, wow. So, you know. Now, it's interesting because you, you mentioned cultures and I imagine, and, and religious background, a sense of, of what happens when we die. And yet, you're big in Mexico, where yes. there's a big sense of culture and, and a, a Catholic religion. Yes. So how does that fly in Mexico? Well, you know, it's interesting because Italian Catholics are different than Irish Catholics. Mm -hmm. are also well, you're di telling me. I'm, I'm, I am telling you, yes, that's why I can tell you. I mean, you know, the Italian Catholics will go to church and then they'll go up the road to the gypsies and get their... their <laughs> They do. It's like natural. The Irish are a bit more proper, so they they tend to have a bit more difficulty mm -hmm. with what I do, just because I, I don't know what it is, but the, it it's it's more intense for them, and I think maybe that's just a, a sort of a cultural thing or whatever. Um, the Hispanic cultures, or particularly Mexico, uh, the Holy Day of the Year is uh, um, Dia de Muerta, which is the Day, uh, of, the day dead. of the Dead. Sure. And when I was there, what was like so amazing to me is I was doing all these unbelievable media shows. I mean, the top number one television and radio and yeah. print work. And they were honored to be in my presence. And I and, and, and it, for me, it was extremely touching because, my God, I mean, I, that's where I, what I want to do. They see you for They see you me for what, what I do. am. And, you know, and I, there wasn't like to prove me you can do it. There wasn't anything. It was like right. I went in like it's about love. And because they're, as you know, with Italians, the family thing is so strong with mm -hmm. them that it didn't matter. I mean, it, it, it was interesting because, you know, in Mexico City, you know, you can get married. You know, they have gay marriages there, which I never knew. And it was like, even if you were, if you did alternative stuff, when it came to the family thing, they all knew the songs. They all hung out together. It was mm. just, for me, it was really, really quite wonderful, How I have to say. How great to get that confirmation. Oh, it was just, it was just great. And I would do these shows and you'd have these producers, because you know, as you well know from the business, Producers, they, they don't want to be in front of camera, certainly not doing what I do with me. Mm. And, um, you know, they would want they would want somebody. So this, there was this one producer who said, like, no, I'll, I'll do it. And he went on camera, and I don't think he expected 
to have happen what happened. Mm. And he, he, he kind of like lost it. I mean, like the tears and, you know, and of course, yeah. you know, the mascara. And, That's what I wrote on know. Facebook today. I said, I hope she, nobody comes in during the, <laughs> during our conversation because I don't want to cry on camera. Um, uh, yeah, because we had somebody show up with you last time, didn't we? Right. So moving right yeah, along. Yeah, moving right along. Yes. <laughs> um, there's nobody here. Yeah. We'll send <laughs> Pay them no away. attention Pay to the... <laughs> behind the curtain. <laughs> right. We behind don't want the what's curtain. behind the curtain. Interesting. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, you talk about um, needing, or I don't know about needing, but having that confirmation. And I was thinking about that this morning as I was thinking about our, our interview today. You have a very strong personality. And I wonder if, if some of that personality is the fact that you always had to prove that you do know what you're talking about or that you really do see um, other beings. I don't know if that has to do with why I have a strong personality. Okay. I've just got a strong I personality. I was curious about but that. But what I will tell you is this. Um, interesting enough, the contrary. I would, I've never been into proving what I do. I really, it's because it, you can't because it's only in the experience. You're, you're ne it's like, it's like, People for five millions and thousands of years were trying to prove people about God. And we know they're not going anywhere. Mm. If they don't want to believe, they don't want to know their God is whatever, you know, like, you know, Charleston Heston, whatever. But, but uh, you're never going to prove anybody. You're just not. It's in your experience. Okay. So I, I'm not on any illusion that I'm going to be able to go in there and prove to you that I can talk to dead people. If you want to share in it with me, I, I love it. I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. But proving it? Not Interesting. Happen. So for me, I've never been interested in doing that. And interesting in a lot of ways, that has worked in my favor when I have gone into radio shows or TV shows where they're, you know, like skeptical. They're skeptical, and, sure. You know, and it's like I said, you know, just let me do my thing. Let's just see what happens. Right. And, you know, invariably, of course, there's always something that happens or always a person that shows up or whatever. That's when you call your friends and say, okay, now blow up this studio. <laughs> <laughs> no, just to yeah, right, right. I don't have to prove right. anything. I don't have, right, right, right. <laughs> but, so, yeah. um, because you know, I mean, the, the 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 bottom line is that you know, grief is such a personal issue, mm. and with our grief are these you know these two other big things: your fears and your beliefs, and they always tie in together. Mm. So because of that, if you have these intense fears or these intense beliefs that you're not supposed to talk to them, which for, for me, when I think about it in, in like a grand picture, okay, um, that person physically died. Does that mean I stopped loving them? No. Does mm. that mean they stopped loving me? No. Mm. So why would I not want to have that option to reconnect or connect or know their well or them letting me know that? It's, it's not a big deal. We're talking about somebody we love. We're just not used to thinking of it this way. So I'm, that's why I'm glad you have the show and, and that we're doing this yeah, because it, yeah. it helps us to think outside of the uh, way, yes. yeah, the way we've been yeah. taught, uh, taught, you know, uh, your strong personality come to think of it probably has helped you with the kind of groups that you've been working with because you were the first woman to be like, recognized by the police because of the work you do with police.